Hello guys, I'm Rarosua Maribi. Welcome back to Sustainability Nuggets. In the first part of this video, I showed you how to determine your daily energy requirement in your homes by using your node profile. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that daily energy requirement to calculate your way up to the amount of solar panels you need to install to meet that load requirement. So with this daily requirement, we'll be able to calculate the size of our inverter, the amount of batteries, the size of the charge controllers, and finally, the amount of solar panels we need. So based on where your building is located on the surface of this planet Earth, the amount of time the sun would remain out will differ. So in some places, we might have up to 12 hours, in some places 10 eight and so on so to calculate your solar requirement or solar panel requirement you actually need to know the length of time the sun is out in your location that's the amount of daylight you have for the purpose of this video we're going to assume that our building is located in the region where the sun is out for 10 hours of the day so that being said we know the daily um, energy requirement and we know that the sun will be out for 10 hours of the day so how much energy will be consumed in 10 hours this can be calculated by saying your daily load requirement which we have determined to be 4225 watt hour in a day which is in 24 hours so divided by 24 hours multiplied by 10 hours of the day when the sun is out and that will give us approximately 1000 760 watt hours in the solar system we also need to determine the autonomy of the battery so when when i say autonomy i mean how long can our battery last if there was no external power to recharge it so if there was an hurricane or like the day or there was like rain for one week or two weeks without sun that was really cloudy. How do we power our appliances? So we can determine or we can decide to um, design a system with a battery autonomy of like two days. So let's let's decide two days for this video. If we have a load of 4,225 watt hour per day and we need batteries to give us two days autonomy. The storage capacity of batteries for two days would be about two times 4,225, which will give us 8,450 watt hour. Remember, I said there were like three ways you could design your system. So, in this video, we're designing a panel to battery to load system. So, we need the panel to charge the battery and then the battery powers the load since we are designing a panel to battery to load system the amount of energy that was calculated to be demanded in 10 hours would be added to the battery capacity for two days to give us um, two days autonomy so we want to be able to power our appliances 10 hours and also in that 10 hours so we want to be able to absorb 10 hours worth of um, energy to power appliances and also enough energy to give us two days autonomy so the total storage autonomy value would then be equal to 8450 plus 1760 points forward so points is not always run the rest of value. So now that we have calculated the amount of energy we want from our system to uh, give us two days autonomy and power our appliances in 10 hours daily, we can now calculate the capacity of each component of the solar system. Remember, the inverter is connected directly to the electrical appliances. So since we are going up from the electrical appliances, to the solar um, panels, the next component is the inverter. We can assume that our inverter has an efficiency of 96%. We could 
because we not as can have like fifty percent efficiency. With that being said, storage autonomy value calculated was about ten thousand two hundred and ten point four two watt hour. So in order for our inverter to be able to deliver that amount of energy with with an efficiency of ninety six percent. We divide our value by 96 percent to get the capacity of the inverter. So that would be 10,210 for 40 all over 0.96, and that would give us 10,685.85. Random to 10,636 watt hour. So the next component comes to the batteries. Batteries are not meant to be discharge completely so they usually have um, a maximum depth of discharge the percentage to which they can be discharged is known as the depth of discharge and must be considered while sizing a battery we're going to assume that our batteries have a depth of discharge of about 70 percent so it means the amount of energy to be stored in the battery to be able to deliver the inverter capacity will be the inverter capacity divided by 0.7 and that is 10,636 divided by 70% will give us about 15,194 watt hour. So this will be the storage capacity of our batteries. With the battery capacity now, we are able to calculate the amount of the batteries to deliver the desired um, amount of energy. So batteries are usually rated in volt amp hour, which is volt times ampere times time, and that gives us watt hour. So at this stage, you can go into the market to see what batteries are available. We have like 12 volts 100 amp hour battery, 12 volts 200 amp hour batteries, and so on. If you choose a battery with lower rating, you end up purchasing more batteries. So for this video, we are going to choose a 12 volt 200 amp hour battery. Therefore, the number of batteries needed to give a storage capacity of 15,194.071 watt hours will be equal to 15,194 divided by 12 times 200, which is equal to 6.33. Of course, we cannot have 6.33 batteries and they are going to be connected in parallel and series. So, we need an even number. So, you round it up to the next even number, which is 8 batteries. While calculating the amount of energy to exit the battery, the depth of discharge of the battery was considered. Now, to determine the amount of energy, to enter the battery from the charge controller, the efficiency of the battery must be considered. So we have the depth of discharge of a battery, which determines how much energy can leave the battery. And we have the efficiency of the battery, which determines how much energy supplied is actually stored in the battery. We can assume that we have a battery efficiency of 75%. The energy input needed for maximum charge of 15,194 watt hour storage capacity battery with an efficiency of 75% would be equal to 15,194.07 divided by 0 0.75 and that will give us 20,258.763 watt hour. Next on the solar system list is the charge controller. Because we've talked about the inverter, the batteries, and now we need to size the charge controller in order to finalize our number of solar panels needed. So let's assume that our charge controller has an efficiency of 80%. All these assumptions being done in real life, you actually check the efficiency of the appliances you are getting in order to correctly um, size your systems. We need to size our charge controllers for 10 hours of the day, which is the uh, amount of time the solar panels will be generating electricity due to the length of daylight in the location of 
chosen. So assuming the charge controller efficiency of 80%, the charge controller capacity in 10 hours would be 20,258.763 divided by 0 0.8. And that will give us 25,323.45 watt hour. The charge controller power rating would be equal to 2,000. 532.34. We can just round it up to 2,533 watts, and that's approximately 2.6 kilowatts. We got this because the capacity is for 10 hours, and we need the energy capacity, which is in watt hours, so divided by 10, we get the power rating. So this means the energy needed to be supplied. By the photovoltaic array is equal to the capacity of the charge controller because you do not want to exceed the capacity of the of your charge controller. So this means the energy needed to be supplied by the photovoltaic array is approximately 25,324 watt hour per day. When you get to this stage, then you go into the market to determine what power rating, what efficiency. Of photovoltaic panels you want to get. So for the purpose of this video we're choosing a photovoltaic panel with specifications of 280 watts, 7.44 ampere, 31.2 volts at a standard insulation of 1000 watts per meter square. So this means that the power put per panel per day will be equal to 200 ampere. 80 watt times the daily requirement, which is 4,843 watt hour per meter per day, times 1,000 watt per meter square, which is the standard solution, and that will give us 1,356.04 watt hour per day. As you mean an overall efficiency of about 90% going to insulation times, wiring, and so on, the number of panels that will be required will be equal to the energy calculated to be supplied by the panel, which is 25,324 watt hour per day, divided by the efficiency of the entire system, which is 90% based on this video, 0 0.9 times the power output per panel per day, which was calculated to be 1356.04 watt hour per day. And that will give us 20.8. We'll always round up to the nearest even number, and that will be 22 panels. So therefore, the array will consist of 11 parallel rows with two panels in series, giving a voltage of 31.2 times 2 volts, which is equal to 62.4 volts. I hope this video was not so complicated as to know the amount of um, solar panel you need to install on your building. Remember, the first step is to determine your um, daily energy requirement, which can be gotten from your load profile. And when once you've gotten your energy requirement, then you um, consider the amount of daylight you have based on your geographic location. And with that, you can work your way upwards from your inverter to your battery to your charge controller and then to your solar panels. Remembering to put into consideration the efficiency of each of these appliances and when it gets to battery, remember that the amount of energy that outputs the battery is based on the depth of discharge and the amount of energy that will be stored in the battery is based on its efficiency. And also at the end of the day, you consider the efficiency of the entire system that includes the wiring because there will be losses um, 
from all of the connections and so it cannot be 100 percent so you also need to put into consideration the efficiency of the entire system and when you do this you'll be able to estimate the amount of solar panels you would actually need on your roof to power your electrical appliances thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to my channel to support um, me making more educational videos on sustainability thank you very much follow me on my social media pages um, they are the handles are on the screen and i'll see you in my next video bye